Greetings, this is M squared, and we're going to solve some linear inequalities, and these ones have fractions in them. So they're a little challenging if you don't remember how to get rid of fractions. So just a refresher again, remember that when you have a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to, it's a closed circle on our graph, on our number line, and if you just have a le less than or greater than, it's going to be an open circle. So we have an inequality that we need to solve. We need to get y alone. We need to get rid of our fraction. That's the easiest way to do it. So whenever you have an inequality or an equation with fractions in it that you're trying to solve, the best way to get rid of the fractions is to multiply each side by the common denominator. So our, we only have one denominator, it's two. So that's our common denominator. So we're gonna multiply the right side by two and the left side by two. The biggest mistake kids make here is that they don't cancel first. Remember that multiplication and division, this is the division sign, the fraction line, they have the same priority in the order of operations. So I can divide before I multiply, and it just makes things a lot easier if you cancel these first. So now that's gone, and my new inequality, after I had done that, looks like this. And now I need to get y alone on one side. So I'm going to move this y over, and I get negative 3y is greater than or equal to 5. And then I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 3, and a little bell should be going off. Oh, I'm dividing an inequality by a negative. That means I have to switch the inequality sign. So don't forget that little trick every time you divide by a negative. So our answer is negative 5 thirds. Now if you put negative 5 thirds in there, it, you should get the same thing on both sides. And it's always a good idea to check. So real quick, if I put a negative 5 thirds in for that y, a negative negative 5 thirds is a positive 5 thirds. So on the left side, I'm getting 5 thirds. Let's put a 5 thirds in there, and I'm going to show you how to do that in the calculator if you don't like um, adding fractions without a calculator a little bit easier and I forgot my negative sign so let's insert a negative right there. Okay so we have negative 5 thirds that we're putting in for y now we're going to add 5 to it and then we're going to divide it by 2 because that was what our original said and that says 1 and 2 thirds which is the same thing as 5 thirds. You can change that to an improper fraction by doing that key so that you see. Now that's just our check to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. But we want to check again after we graph it to make sure we shade it in the correct way. Because if you forget to switch that sign, you're going to shade in the wrong, um, the wrong side. So we know it's negative 5 thirds. We know it's a closed circle because we have that line under it. And we have the variable on the left. I always like to have inequalities with the variable on the left because then I know to go this way. So I'm assuming that um, I'm correct here and that I'm shading to the left. But if I wasn't, I can just check a point. You know, this, these, this is a negative number. This is zero over here. So I'm gonna pick a negative number. I'm just gonna check negative 10 to make sure this works. So I go back up here and I put a negative 10 in for y. So I'm checking negative 10. When I put a negative 10 in for y, I get a negative negative 10, which is a positive 10. So the left side says 10. I'm gonna put a negative 10 in for this y, and when I do, I get a negative 5 on top divided by 2 is negative 2 and a half. 10 is definitely greater than or equal to, which is what we have, negative 2.5. So I know that I had the right answer here because I checked the solution and I know that I graphed correctly because I checked a point over here. You could check a point over here and you'll get, you won't get the correct answer. For example, 0. If I put 0 in there, let me check 0. I get 0 on this side because negative 0 is still 0. If I put a zero there, I get five divided by two, which is positive 2.5, and zero is not bigger than 2.5. It is less than 2.5, so I know that zero would be wrong. So it doesn't matter which side you check. You check on the correct side, you're gonna get a correct inequality. If you check on the other side, you won't. Now this one has two denominators. Remember, we have to get the common denominator. So our common denominator is 12. Once I find the common denominator, I multiply both sides by 12 but I cancel first, I divide first. Three goes into 12 four times, four goes into 12 three times. And now I'll rewrite it. And then we'll distribute. Three times x is three x, 
3 times 8 is 24, 7 times 4 is 28, x times 4 is 4x. And then I want to get my variables on the left side and my numbers on the right side. So I'm going to minus 4x from both sides. Cancels there and I get x, negative x. And I'm going to minus 24 from both sides. And I get 4. Now the opposite of x is less than 4. So I'm going to have to divide by a negative 1 to get rid of that negative x. And when I do, I get an x, and hopefully the bell went off, and you said, oh, we got to switch the inequality sign because we divided by a negative. So now I know that x is greater than negative 4. Again, if I put a negative 4 in there, I should get the same thing on both sides. So let's check negative 4. When I put a negative 4 in there, I get 8 minus 4, which is 4, divided by 4, which is 1. If I put a negative 4 in there, I get 7 minus 4, which is 3, divided by 3, which is 1. So that's good. I checked my negative 4, and I got the same thing on both sides. So now I want to graph. This says x is greater than negative 4. So it's an open circle because it's greater than. And my arrow is pointing to the right. And if the variable is on the left, you can always follow that arrow. Remember that. But x is greater than negative 4. So I'm wanting all the numbers that are greater than negative 4. And now I'm going to check 0. So I want to make sure I shaded correctly. So if I put a 0 in there, I get 8 divided by 4, which is 2. And if I put a 0 in here, I get 7 thirds. Now, I don't know if you know what 7 thirds is, but it's if you change it to a mixed number, it's 2 and a third. And 2 is definitely less than 2 and a third. So we know we're right. This is my solution. This is my graph. This is my solution. This is my graph. And they usually tell you to solve and graph on a number line. Good luck with that. This is M squared signing out.